All right, the trailer's out, hooked up to the truck. You know what that means. Time to get another piece of junk tractor. Got the tires aired up. Gonna start loading stuff up so we can head out tomorrow morning. Leaking oil now. Yeah. I'm going to timestamp different things that happen in this video so you'll be able to see it along the timeline of the YouTube video and then also down in the description below so you can skip to the interesting parts. Right now I'm taking apart the hubs because they have a lot of play. So I got this tension pretty good. Now the only play is coming from um, the bottom uh, here, this bushing. Um, so next, this half inch bolt, half inch.
So the key is to get it all in one weld. Don't weld some and then weld a little more and then weld a little more, especially with flux core. So now quench it. Hit it with some PB blaster. Because if you weld a little bit, then weld a little bit. What ends up happening is the, the weld isn't as strong. And you want to get it hot. And looks like we got this one first try. And you know it's time to stop when the nut starts melting. You'll be able to see it. Looks like we got that one first try as well. All right, so I got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Is that one? It it'll be fine. There's a strap, a metal strap that goes across here that holds it down. It, I don't think there will be any problems with leaking. Uh, and either way, I probably won't use that uh, upper housing. I'm going to use this one, and I have a second radiator. This one, the lip looks better. All right, there we go, radiator on. Decided not to use the one with the water pump because the water pump radiator pipe goes out a different spot and wouldn't fit through here. It's important to do things right the first time. As you can see in this video, I'm using silicone instead of Loctite 515, which is what I should have used, even though the Loctite 515 costs about seven times as much as the silicone. I did end up having to remove this gear cover because it started leaking on the bottom and use the Loctite 
we're back to where we were before with no extra spacer. And if I had read this manual right before, it says, do not forget the spacer. Oh yeah. Shellac a new gasket to cover. Shellac is just the type of gasket maker they used before they had the silicone. So uh, even in the manual, it calls for not using silicone. I mean, not using another gasket. Uh, now, washer and nut on the drive gear. So when I had this first reduction gear cover off, again, to reseal it, I actually replaced that bearing that goes in behind the castle nut and washer there. Now it's best to buy bearings for pretty much anything by looking at the number on the bearing rather than going to like John Deere, for example, and trying to buy the bearing. So I was able to get a 16 pack of these New Departure 3204 roller bearings for only $30. And they were the nice made in America new old stock ones. Whereas if you had gone to John Deere, it probably would have been at least $30 for just one. I'm using new grade 8 5 16 bolts. So I want to try and get a bushing for this clutch lever, but first I have to beat out the bolt. I'm just going to try and use the air hammer. That was easy. Too easy. Here's the clutch lever. Yeah, I'd say she's a little worn out. You may notice a slight increase in video and sound quality. That's because I'm using a, a legitimate camcorder. Anyway, the parts are back from the machine shop for the John Deere B. Head and cylinder. About a thousand bucks. I'll show the head a little more when we put it on, but Here's the cylinder. Looking good. There's a tiny bit more pitting in there. And that's because the pitting was so bad that even though we went 90 thousandths over 45, it still had some pitting. Here's the new pistons. This So I'm all set up. To get this together, just have to clean up the gasket surface and then we'll be good to go.
I got the cylinder, the crankcase service all cleaned up. Now I have a brand new old stock John Deere gasket. Here's the part number. I'm gonna use some of this gasket sealant, extra protection. Got me to hold it. Uh, I got it. All the nuts are on. Torque them down. About that much is good. Torque them all down, crisscross. There's four packages of piston rings. They're labeled where they go. Fifth groove is the bottom, first groove is the top of the pistons. I just went and got a little container and put some just 1040 oil in there. Drop the rings you don't really have to on. soak the rings like this. You can. I thought it would help. Some people commented on my TikToks and said it's not a good idea, but now, these I didn't. Oil control rings It'll be fine. My piston ring pliers. So just put them on the old-fashioned way. The notch faces up. These pliers are a little small for these big rings. But I'll make it work. And I've been putting these in the cylinder and checking the end gap. Um, it's not like this is a turbocharged high compression engine, so it's not that big of a deal, but I've been checking and they've all been fine. All right, there's all the piston rings on. It's important to know which way, which way the connecting rods go. So this side is up on the connecting rod because I have the marks here marking which cylinder it goes in. And this side's going to be up on the piston because that's this side that the notches are on. So just make sure I remember that. Tight fit. It's important to make sure your piston pins are in. All right, now our rod piston assemblies are ready to be installed in the tractor. All right, I got the piston and the the um, piston ring compressor ready to go in. I offset the rings about a third, a third, a third. Put a little bit of oil in there. Make sure our dot is facing up.
So got to do that one by hand. After that, should be easy. And it should just go right in. And Bob's your uncle. Torque them to about 50 foot pounds first. Then, in the manual, it doesn't say what torque you should bring these to, but about 72 is what I've read on forms and stuff. And then uh, for me to put cotter pins in these. On this side, at some point, these were changed. I got the cotter pins on uh, number two cylinder, but on number one, they're not. They don't have holes in the bolts. And these notches are obviously too small to put a cotter pin in. So I'm going to clean them off with some brake clean. And use some... Uh, some uh, Loctite, thread locker. Spins over without too much effort. I got all the head studs installed with a little bit of the blue thread locker, and then I used the two nuts to put them in. Make sure all the debris or anything that's in the pistons is out, ready to put the head gasket on. Stuff just wants to dry right out in the metal. Perfect. To be installed. So these nuts are supposed to be torqued down to 96 foot-pounds. I just torqued them down to about 60 as a first stage. Now I'm going to go to 96. All right, I'm ready to put the manifold on. These are all new studs. And new gasket. Drop the manifold on.
And then I'm gonna put some anti-seize on the bolts. And then I'm gonna use brass nuts. Back of these 7 16 14 thread. So these bolts, there used to be screws here holding this oil feed line on, but I'm replacing them. They're just quarter 20, so I'm just replacing them with bolts instead of screws. The oil feed line tightened down. Sometimes you have to go backwards to go forwards. Yeah, the radiator can't be in the way to put this fan on. Well, you can't even see this one. Time to set the valves. Step one is to get the cylinder that you're setting at top dead center. Hold the wrench on the adjustment bolt, tighten the lock nut. on the intake. Just a little bit of drag. Now we'll roll the engine over. Exhaust valve open. Intake valve open. Keep going. Top dead center. We'll check them again. And they're good. So now we're all set to. Now we're all set in here and we're ready to put the valve cover on. So you need nuts like these that are two sided, a little bit shorter than this. And they go in here. So you can bolt down the rocker assembly and put these bolts on. And you're supposed to have copper washers on here, but I have to take this all apart. So. Please this. Well, this is unfortunate. Got one leak right there. You can see right where it's coming out. 
right there. And then it's just kind of flowing across and making it seem like there's leaks there. But I think it's just that one. So I use this flux and this acid core solder and it should be in there good enough. I guess we'll have to find out. Oh, we got it. You can see we're full to the top of the core. And we have no leak. What's dripping is just left over from before. So I thought there were multiple leaks, but it just flows along the fins and then drips in a different spot. So we're good. So here we are screwing around trying to get this tractor started. What we were using was a Wico XB distributor and we called John Brillman wondering like what our problem is. We have spark on the spark plug, but it's not starting. He said the coils go bad and if you don't have a really strong spark, it won't spark in the cylinder, but it will spark in regular atmosphere. So in this next clip, we ended up just putting on a Delco Remy distributor that had known good spark. It was off one of the other John Deere bees I have, and that ended up working. And we also used a 12 volt battery. We don't have an extra 12 volt battery. You can just hear the Alice Chalmers in the background running. We just have booster cables. Twelve volts borrowing off the Alice. 